What's up everyone, Criddle here, and I want to talk about Quantum Knight. So this is a game that has been on the Steam uh, demo list for the last week. Uh, so I did, went ahead and downloaded it. I believe it's more of like an early access kind of for this game because it's going to seem or it's going to be like one of those, you know, MMO style games. You're going to be able to play this game for a very long time from what I can tell. It's a lot like Genshin Impact if you played something like that. Um, basically you are playing these quantum knights so it's kind of like medieval looking but then you have guns so you're shooting but it's a third person shooter uh, and you'll end up being able to switch between up to three characters in your squad which is really cool. I, don't, I thought it was going to be just a, a very basic you know third person shooter. You're going to run around, you're going to shoot stuff and I thought it was going to honestly be pretty bland after a while but um, as you play into the game some more you start to unlock more characters uh, very much like Genshin style but it's not a gotcha game so don't think about that however I am a bit worried about a pay to win side of it which we'll get into in a few minutes so you uh, you unlock these characters um, which I've unlocked all but one of them and just only playing it in two days so it's pretty easy to unlock these characters and then once they're unlocked you can level them up I believe the max level is 50 uh, then you can also level up their gear so you can level up their armor they have four different armor slots I think it's gloves helmet uh, boots and chest piece uh, and you can level those up and then you can also level up their weapons so each character has like a base element that they use primarily so you have like a electric ice fire um, there's a like a poison uh, I think there's a couple other ones. I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, they all have different types of elements, and then they all bring something different to the table when you put them in your squad. So if you have them in your squad, you might get like a 3% bonus to your damage, or you might get, you know, 5% run speed bonus, things like that. Um, and then you'll be able to switch between those characters. So if you go up against an enemy that is re you know, weak to fire, you'll use your fire character. And then the next one might be weak to electric, so you'll use your electric character. And then each of these characters also has abilities. The main character I chose was Cynthia as my prime primary character. I thought that was the character I was going to take all the way through the game. I found out later that you'll be able to add two more characters and switch between them as much as you want. Um, so it's not really a big deal, the original character that you choose. So just choose whatever you think is going to be fun. And if you don't like it, just know that you'll be able to change that later. Um, so I chose Cynthia. She is the fire character. Uh, they have two different abilities. So you have a, a Q ability and an E ability. I didn't use the um, gamepad since it is more of a shooter. Most of the time when I play third person games, I like to play with a gamepad. But uh, for shooters, I like to play with mouse and keyboard. It just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, so it's Q and E are their abilities for this Cynthia character you use the Q ability and it basically empowers her weapon to do fire damage and then you can further upgrade that to do like explosives and things like that so as you level up you gain skill points and then you can spend those skill points in one of three different trees so you have your uh, like your main ability tree which is the Q you have a like a buff type thing which is E so not all of them are buffs for Cynthia it happens to be a buff that puts a big circle on the ground and everybody inside of that gets 20% damage bonus uh, some characters will hit E and throw like a grenade type of thing out um, so it just all depends on the type of character that you choose and then the final ability is like their dodge or or avoid ability uh, some of them it's a dodge some of them it's a roll some of it's like a small teleport some of them um, there's one that actually shoots this string out and then pulls to it so if you as long as you grapple something it'll pull you to that um, so they all have a little bit different abilities that way so your three different abilities are what you'll be able to level up so each time you level you get a skill point and then you can go into leveling those like increasing the the damage output of your character um, then so you, you can have like 10 points up there at the top which is the one that I kept choosing was increasing the damage and then below that um, depending on which one of the three you go into it gives that ability a boost so for Cynthia for example I chose the um, the Q ability so now my shots will explode randomly like I think it's like a 30% chance that my shots will explode when they hit an enemy doing you know damage to everything around them um, and then you can choose to go down from there and then choose another ability after that and then finally you get down to like this ultimate ability of that ability tree but you can go and kind of spread those out all that however you want to depending on your gameplay uh, from what I can tell you cannot get all of those maxed out so you do have to kind of create these different builds but luckily they do give you the ability to set different um, 
quick loads, basically. I know you start out with three, and it looks like you can unlock up to five quick loads per character. So you can just say, hey, I want this, you know, when I'm playing in a group, or I want this when I'm playing solo or whatever. And you can just quickly switch between the different things. Uh, and it doesn't cost anything to reset and respec anyway. So that's really, really nice. Um, but what it does seem like you can do is it's going to be uh, very multiplayer heavy, it looks like. Uh, there wasn't a lot of people playing from what I could tell, or if they were, they were way above me or way below me, and it wasn't putting me into a lot of matches with other people. Um, so, But I did every once in a while when I went into the matchmaking get a group with somebody, uh, and that was a lot of fun. So it looks like you can have parties of up to four players and go in to do these dungeons, but while you're doing that, you still have access to your entire squad of three characters that you have. So you can still switch between those and your friends that you're playing with can also switch between those. So really you could go into a mission with 12 different characters um, with you know four players having three characters each. So you could really change things up and do a lot of really cool combinations. I'm not sure how much that'll actually come into play, but it seems like it could be a lot of fun. Um, the the dungeons are very short. They're not really well. There's there's dungeons and then there's missions. So basically, the missions are you're going to be your main thing. You can open up this log and it gives you a, a bunch of different missions you can do. And at the end of each mission, there's a boss fight. The faster you do the mission, you get some you know bonus XP. Or if you do side objectives, you get bonus things, stuff like that. So if you played Genshin Impact, you can go into these missions and you can unlock it. it has a chance to get certain things. You're always going to get experience for doing it, but you might get you know earrings or you might get you know a new uh, ring or new jewelry types those are different things that you can get so you have your armor set and then you have your jewelry set uh, the jewelry set is more bonus stats whereas your armor set you're going to keep leveling up which is going to increase your cp value i'm not sure what cp stands for i'm assuming like character points or something along those lines um, but your cp value is based on your armor upgrades and your weapon upgrades which you're going to keep upgrading throughout the game so you have to upgrade like the base armor five times and then you can upgrade it to the next tier uh, and then you upgrade that 10 times so then you can upgrade it to the next tier then that one you have to upgrade 15 times and so on that's basically how it works until you get up to basically what they call i think legendary armor i think it starts out as like common and then it goes to like superior and then rare and then you know it keeps going up at like epic and then legendary something along those lines um so once you pick a character, the armor doesn't change on them, which I was a little bit bummed about. Um, you can level up the armor, but you can't swap it out from what I could tell. You can, however, swap out the jewelry slots, which you'll be getting by doing some of these missions. Uh, so you can increase you know, the damage that you do. You can increase your defensive side of things. You can kind of balance those out if you want to, however you want to do it. Uh, the weapon variety seems okay from what I can tell. Uh, there are rifles, there are submachine guns, like grenade launchers, uh, um, there's sniper rifles, things like that. Uh, but you know, there's not, there doesn't seem to be a huge variety. I think I found only about maybe 10 different weapons, uh, but you have to keep collecting those weapons because when with weapons, a little bit different than armor, on your weapon side of things, you're going to level the weapon up and then you have to get two weapons of the same type and the same element to be able to level that up to the next grade. So you have to level up a weapon five times like you do your armor, then you have to get two other weapons of the exact same type, exact same element, put those in there to upgrade it to the next grade, and then you have to level it up 10 times and then find two of those weapons again to con can that so you continue to do that and so you can upgrade it so leveling up your weapons is going to be more difficult than leveling up your armor but also probably a little bit more uh, beneficial to your character because it's going to increase your damage and things like that um, so you're going to have two basically different ways to level your character you're going to have the base level it's just going to level it through xp up to level 50 which is going to be skill points and then you're going to be able to level each of your gear items uh, up a little bit each time which is going to just give you different or sorry, it's going to make you stronger depending on which, um, you know, what you level up and then which weapons you use. So you could use a machine gun on, on one character and then you could switch it to a grenade launcher, you know, but I would recommend doing it with like same elements. So if you have a fire character, stick with a fire weapon for that character. Um, and then also look at some of the perks, like my perk on Cynthia when I was using her was every like 30% chance 
each shot would explode and do damage. Well, I want something that shoots a lot so I get more of those explosions than something that shoots very slow. So I wouldn't want like a sniper rifle or a grenade launcher. So I chose to go with a rifle. Submachine gun shoots a little bit faster, does less damage per hit, but I like rifles. They shoot a little bit slower than a submachine gun, but they hit for a little bit more. Uh, and that kind of was my balance point. I, that's where I really like to be. So I like to have, uh, when I was running around, I was running with a submachine gun on one character, a uh, rifle on another character, and then my third character was a grenade launcher character, which was taking out the goblins because they were weak to poison, and he happened to be a poison damage character. So that's pretty much it for this game. Um, oh, the other thing I was going to say is the dungeon side of it. There are random dungeons as you run around in the world, so it's not like an open world map per se, uh, but you can just kind of run around in this open-ish world and then you do these missions that I was telling you about but then there's also these portals that you can go into which are a lot more like the Genshin Impact uh, dungeons where you go up to this portal and then you can go inside and you actually run through like a dungeon um, that's going to be a little bit different whereas the missions are more like overworld missions it just kind of loads in this scenario and then you go through the overworld area but you do that only with your party so anyway I think the game's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be, um, you know, a game that you can stick with for a very long time if you like that kind of thing. It's very similar to Destiny, but just third person. Um, and the last thing I was going to say about it was the pay to win. So I said I was going to come back to that. It does look like it might end up being pay to win. So as you go through the game to get all these upgrade materials, you have to... Uh, you know, do events in the game. However, you can go to the shop, which is not currently available, but it does say in the game that you can go to the shop and buy certain materials for cash. So if you can buy those materials and upgrade your stuff to in game, there is a PVP side to the game, which could completely ruin that if people just go in and spend a bunch of money, get the best weapons in the game and go for it. Because it, it is random as you... As you start to level up your gear, the first time you try to level it up, it's 100% chance. And then each time you level it after that, that chance gets lower and lower and lower. So getting into those higher tiers can become very difficult, very time consuming, um, and just luck. It's just pure luck. So if you want to throw a bunch of money at the game, you know, obviously that luck chance doesn't decrease but you could have more chances at it so you you know you can get there a lot faster i'm hoping they don't make it to pay to win but that is my biggest concern with the game right now is that it will end up being pay to win it is a pve game um, it seems like for the most part but there is a pvp side to it so pay to win may not be a big deal for you you might just be willing to to go through on the pve side and have fun i mean i play a lot of genshin impact i really like that game i like those style of games and it's a gotcha game it's trying to get you to spend money to buy wishes to get more characters and then level up those characters faster however i don't do that i play it as a pve game and i don't i spend minimal amount of money and still have a lot of fun with those kind of games so Hopefully, this game will be the same. Anyway, uh, that's going to be my spiel for Quantum Knights. I do recommend checking it out if you like third-person shooters uh, or any type of action shooter game. It is a lot of fun to play, uh, especially if you want to play a game with your friends. Um, maybe if you want to play a game with me, you can come on over to my Twitch channel and say hello. I do play a variety of games every single day, so uh, stop by and check it out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.